Hello student, this is Biology Form 4, Chapter 15, 15.3, Menstrual Cycle, Role of Hormones in Menstrual Cycle. So, menstrual cycle involves the production of a secondary oocyte and thickening of the endometrial wall throughout one cycle. In this cycle, the endometrium will become soft, thick, and rich with blood vessel. This is to prepare the endometrium for embryo implantation. If fertilization does not take place, the secondary oocyte will die and the endometrium wall will shed. This will lead to bleeding known as menstruation. The functions of hormones in a menstrual cycle. Table 15.2 Okay, The first one we divide into two. Uh, this one is pituitary gland secreted by pituitary gland and secreted by the ovary. The hormone secreted by the pituitary gland is the follicle stimulating hormone FSH and also the luteinizing hormone LH. The FSH hormone stimulates the follicle growth in the ovary and also stimulates the release of estrogen. LH hormone stimulates ovulation and causes the formation of corpus luteum. LH hormone also stimulates the release of another hormone, progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone secreted in the ovary. Estrogen repairs and stimulates the thickening of the endometrium, stimulates the follicle growth until matures, stimulates also the FSH and LH release prior to ovulation. Progesterone stimulates the thickening of the endometrium, making the endometrium thick, folded, and rich in blood vessel to prepare for the implantations of embryo. Progesterone stops the release of FSH and LH to prevent follicle growth and ovulation. Changes in hormonal level, the follicle growth, and changes in endometrial wall thickness throughout one menstrual cycle are shown in this figure. Okay, this is for hormone level. This is the stages of events and hormonal level changes in one menstrual cycle. So look at this hormonal level. This is hormone level and this is the number of days. So one cycle consists of 28 days. So from day 0 to day 5. Before a menstrual cycle begins, the level of hormone is low. So look at this uh, hormone level graph. Before menstrual cycle, the level of hormone is low. So we have four types of hormone here. FSH, the estrogen, the LH and progesterone. So during day 0 to 5, the hormone is low. With the absence of stimulation from the progesterone and estrogen, the thickened endometrium will shed and menstruation will begin. This is first day. So here, menstruation, day 1 until day 5. The menstrual cycle begins a day before menstruation when the hypothalamus releases the gonadotropin-releasing hormone, the GNRH. GNRH stimulates the pituitary gland to release the follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and also the luteinizing hormone, LH, into the blood. Okay, so here, the FSH and the LH is secreted. The FSH stimulates the follicle growth in the ovary. This is development of primary follicle. Within the primary follicle, the oocyte grows into the secondary oocyte, which is contained within the graphene follicle. So this is graphene follicle. Growing follicles release estrogen. So here, development of secondary follicle. So estrogen is being released. Okay, estrogen is being released by the growing follicles. Estrogen encourage follicle maturation and also encourage the endometrial wall repair. Low levels of estrogen inhibit the release of FSH and LH hormone via a negative feedback mechanism which in turn prevents the growth of new follicles. For day 6 to 14, day 6 to 14, day 6 to 14, the estrogen level rises here, the estrogen level rises and peaks on day 12. Here Stimulating the hypothalamus to secrete the GnRH. Okay, what is GnRH? The gonadotropin releasing hormone via a positive feedback mechanism. So a high level of GnRH then stimulates the pituitary gland to secrete more FSH and LH. The LH level rises until it peaks on day 13. So here day 13 LH. Eh? Leading to ovulation and release of a secondary oocyte from graphene follicle on day 14. So 14, day 14 is ovulation. So 
the release of secondary oocyte from graphian follicle on day 14 here. So, ini adalah ovulation. Secondary oocyte released from the graphian follicle. LH also stimulates the follicular tissue left behind to transform into the corpus luteum. So, here, corpus luteum generated. Day 15 to 21. 15 to 21 here. LH, luteinizing hormone, stimulates the corpus luteum to secrete estrogen and progesterone. The combinations of estrogen and progesterone inhibit the release of FSH and LH from the hypothalamus via negative feedback mechanism so as to stop the growth of new follicle. So here, the growth of new follicle is being stopped. Day 15 to 21 here, the level of FSH and LH going down because estrogen and progesterone inhibit the release of FSH and LH from the hypothalamus. So here, the progesterone level increase. Progesterone stimulates the endometrial wall thickening. So here, progesterone stimulates the endometrial wall thickening and reaching it with blood vessels in the preparation for embryo implantation in the event that if the fertilization takes place. For day 22 to 28, Okay, here, 22 to 28. If fertilization does not take place, decreasing LH level will cause the corpus luteum to degenerate, which in turn stops the secretions of estrogen and progesterone. So here, day 22 to 28. If fertilization does not take place, LH level decrease, the corpus luteum degenerate. Okay, here, corpus luteum will degenerates this will stop the secretions of estrogen and progesterone so here we look at the estrogen and progesterone level decrease decreasing without stimulation from estrogen and progesterone the endometrium will shed and menstruation will begin okay so this ini menstruation will begin again so dia akan ulang lagi balik cycle yaitu day day one okay day one we calculate day one as the first day of the menstruation Low levels of progesterone and estrogen will no longer inhibit the hypothalamus and pituitary gland making way for GnRH to be secreted again. So this will stimulate the secretions of FSH and LH. So a new menstrual cycle will begin with new follicle growth. So we will begin again from day 1. If fertilization occur, the corpus luteum will not degenerate but will continue to grow and secrete progesterone and estrogen. So, this will cause the endometrial wall to continually thicken in order to support the, the fetal growth. So, itu yang berlaku dalam cycle, one cycle. So, one cycle equal to 28 day. Okay? This is day 0 to day 5, day 6 to day 14, day 15 to 21, day 22 to 28. Role of hormone in pregnancy and miscarriage. The corpus luteum will continue to produce estrogen and progesterone up to 3 to 4 months after pregnancy. Thereafter, the corpus luteum will degenerate and the productions of estrogen and progesterone will be taken over by the placenta until birth. Progesterone inhibit the secretions of FSH and LH. Therefore, the menstrual cycle and ovulation do not occur throughout pregnancy. The imbalance of progesterone and estrogen levels may lead to miscarriage due to the decrease of progesterone level which causes the uterus to shrink. So premenstrual syndrome and menopausal syndrome. What is premenstrual syndrome? PMS. Okay, premenstrual syndrome or symptoms that appear prior to a menstrual cycle. This is known as PMS, premenstrual syndrome usually manifest between 7 to 14 days before the first day of the menstrual cycle. So this syndrome occurs due to the imbalance of estrogen and progesterone hormone within the menstrual cycle. So this is the symptom, some of the symptom, fatigue, headache, emotional instability, and also bad temper. For menopause, this occurs within the age of 46 to 50 years old when ovulation and menstruation stop naturally. The increase in age lead to reduce the secretions of progesterone and estrogen, which will then cause the reduced stimulations of FSH and LH on the ovaries. So at this stage, the ovaries stop producing ovum. So after menopause, a woman cannot conceive a child anymore. So these are some of the symptoms for menopause. Difficulty in sleeping, hot flashes, low mood, and bad temper.
Okay, so that's all for today. We will continue next subtopic in the next video. Thank you.